All I know from the song is that one lyric. I didn't get that at all. Life is a highway. Unfortunately, it is a sad thing. I actually did the video of Chesley Christ, who was 30 years old, that had ended her life in New York after such a very short and so successful career. And still, weeks later, we are still asking ourselves why. We knew that she was going through something mentally and it just got the best of her. All these cases, they came within days of each other. Stockbridge, Georgia. Moses J. Mosley, 31 years old. His body was found in Hudson Bridge area of Stockbridge, Georgia. His family hadn't heard from him within a few days. That was not normal behavior for him. A missing persons report was filed. OnStar had been contacted, which tracked the car, and that's where and when his body was discovered. The family told TMZ that he died of a gunshot wound. Investigators wanted to know at the time who pulled the trigger. Mosley is known for his work on The Walking Dead, Watchmen, The Hunger Games, Catching Fire. He passed away on January 26, 2022. Now police have ruled this death as a suicide. The Mosley family believes it was murder. My condolences to the Mosley family and I hope that they get the answers that they seek. It's Moses Mosley here and I just wanted to say thank you so much for requesting the video but I'm um, just to tell you a little bit about me. I've been acting in modeling for about three and a half years now and it's been nothing short of amazing. It's been the greatest moments of my life and personally I found what I want to do in my life like this is my passion and I just you know I'm thankful that I even got the opportunity to be on such an amazing show as The Walking Dead. In Hyattsville, Maryland, Kevin Ward, 44 years old, affectionately known as Scooter, has died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was found in Fort Marcy Park in McLean. And for those that have never heard of him, he was the mayor of Washington, D.C., the second black mayor and openly gay mayor, which made history according to the Washington Post. I was all over his social media page. He was a family man again in a same-sex marriage with two sons. The sons I most definitely feel something for and then i saw that he was a prince fan i was like oh no i read many comments of people thanking him for helping them get through their most darkest times he did sermons at church the Washington Post stated he spoke on the toll of the pandemic, racial injustice, and the heavy grief that he suffered after the passing of his mother. And how difficult it was for him to battle cancer, not once, but twice. What I'm saying here is just a drop in the bucket to the lives he helped, the people that he touched that was actually going through or may have been going through the same problems as him. And for the thousands, I mean the thousands of people that he left behind, including those two boys that are all over his page. And everyone wants to know why. Why did he end his life on January 25th, 2000? 22 and my condolences 
to his family. I call my brother from another mother, Joshua Seuss, because Norman thinks that you have the best hair in the world and I need you to mess it up with some ice water. So uh, there you go, challenges have been issued and I am now going to dump this water on myself. <laughs> All right, we're good. Ian Alexander Jr., 26 years old, the son of Ian Washington Sr., who is a record producer, and Regina King, who has been in so many of my favorite movies, Poetic Justice and Higher Learning, just to name two, had started off with 227, a comedy that I watched back in the day with my mom. Her son would go a different route, and he would become a musician and a DJ, and he called himself Dustin. But, by looking at his videos, he was extremely funny. He could have easily been a comedian or a really good actor, in my opinion. I had to record over this because it's obviously a Bobby Brown song and I didn't even vaguely recall remembering when Bobby Brown was on 227 but he's dancing and a very young a very cute Regina King is dancing right along with him and her son he would make I would like to say a little bit of fun at his mom and her old school dancing because he did the same exact thing she did and I loved it. I'm sure she did too. One of them saying, quote, I don't think Instagram is healthy for me, end quote. And quote, you know the episode of Spongebob where they go inside the brain and it's a bunch of mini Spongebobs just losing their shit. Yeah, that one really hits home, end quote. One of your favorites, huh? Uh, absolutely, all-time favorites. I got the uh, Autograph Prince album at a silent auction, actually. Oh, really? And I uh, kind of just hemmed up the table the whole time. And just every time somebody came in and put a signature after mine, came right behind me. What record? What, what album? Controversy. He didn't quite hug me back, but I kind of felt like it was because... It was the first time, and he didn't really know me. Right. He's not really so, like a hugger? Uh, yeah, and then the second time... I don't know um, if I hugged Prince. Did you hug... He's so pretty. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if I hugged him. I don't think I hugged him. No, I don't think I have... Oh, okay, so I don't need to take it personally. No, no, yeah, okay. no. Was he wearing a, a guitar? He, no, he was not wearing a guitar. She would speak on her son and how close they were, right down to their matching tattoos. So when Ian ended his life two days after turning 26, I know it crushed her. He was her only child. I also read in articles that there was no warning. He didn't give any warning. He didn't say he was hurting. He didn't say he was suffering. And he would just do this. All right, nigga, we finna try this little anchovy thing. Anchovy, you know what I mean? Nigga, this song has been playing for like 30 hours. I'm so nice. <laughs> oh, my, oh my god, wait, no. I actually am a little emotional right now. Yeah, you contemplated over and over again. And the grief is so severe that you don't even care. The people that you're going to leave devastated in the path of what you've just done. People often say they're selfish for what they did. 
I'm one of those people that say that. But are they even thinking clearly around that moment to even know, to even justify the hurt and pain that they have inflicted on so many after their demise? Do they even know? I think that their pain is so overwhelming at that point they might not even care. COVID. I do believe that COVID has a lot to do with this. The fact that there's even more suicides, more addictive behavior, more domestic violence. I do believe that COVID has a lot to do with it. I know people right now very close to me that are struggling. I tell them seek professional advice. I want them to have an unbiased opinion from a professional. But I will tell you what I told them and I will tell you what I've done for myself. Find something different in your life. Perhaps get off of social media for a while. Read a book. I have several books that I have yet to read and I'm about to start. Exercise that always makes you feel better and it makes you look better too. Go for walks, reach out to somebody that you haven't spoke to in a while that was a positive person in your life. Plan a trip, even if it's just a trip for two days and it's somewhere close by. I understand money might be tight. It could be a trip to a relative's house where you can just camp out on their sofa and use their refrigerator to eat. But do something different. Play board games. Whatever happened to board games? I just recently went and got a lot of them. I have Monopoly, I have Checkers, I have Operation. Yeah, I do. I even have a Ouija board, but that's a whole nother story. Get a hobby. I am just finishing up the touches on my dollhouse that I plan to get a big kind of stand to put it on. And I will show you guys when I'm done. If things get too bad, like I say, call those 1-800 numbers, reach out to them. My girlfriend who's struggling right now, she was talking about insurance. I think my insurance covers it. And that just, I just wanted to scream because everybody doesn't have insurance. And are you not going to help somebody because their insurance doesn't cover your mental health services? Oh, and that's true. And they won't because it's all a business. Reach out to these toll-free numbers. She actually stated that she called And that she was on hold for six minutes to where she finally hung up. I said, oh my goodness, that's unacceptable. Six minutes? You were on hold? And then somebody pointed out, can you imagine the calls that these 1-800 centers are getting? Call back. Two and three numbers, four and five numbers. Get a whole bunch of toll-free numbers that help with this type of stuff. And they're all 24 hours. Reach out. Reach out to somebody. Don't let this be your final option. You just don't know what things will be like. Six days, six months, maybe even six hours from now. How would you know? You won't know. These are sad cases and I want to say rest in peace to the ones that felt that they had no other options. And again, my condolences to everybody that has lost somebody due to suicide anywhere. Because it's something that you think about. How could you not? No, I'm over. No, sir. I'm ready. Ready.